Okay, so I'm going to um, do problem 7 from the homework here using Excel so you can see how it's done. Um, it's asking us to uh, consider the following speed limits and death rates from automobile accidents in, sit in certain countries. And so they've given us our death rates in per 100 million vehicles, miles, and the speed limits in miles per hour. And I'm going to copy and paste this into Excel. So remember, to, if I can do that, click here and copy to the clipboard and then I can paste it into Excel which I've already done. So here's my formulas. I get rid of the extra words and um, just because I didn't want to make it too big. So I need to graph these first because that's the first thing it wants me to do is it wants me to oops, it wants me to look at these graphs and figure out well which scatter plot is it. So I need to graph these and to do that I have to figure out which one is my X and which one is my Y and it makes more sense that speed limit is the deep, is the independent variable and death rate is dependent upon speed. So I'm going to graph these and I have my X's and Y's here and I'm actually going to change the order of them just to make it easier. So I'm going to highlight this column and move it. So I'm going to cut and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uh, right click and insert the cut cells. So I have X and Y. And now I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to create a graph. I'm going to insert a graph. To do that, I go to insert. And here's my graph choices. And I want ah, a scatter plot. I don't want to connect them, I just want a simple scatter plot. and so what it's done is it's created a graph where I can see well here's my X's, these are my uh, speeds this is my um, uh, deaths you know from uh, 0 to 7 per 100 million and it's got my points and so that's basically what my graph should look like you know I should have a bunch of points here then two then you know three extra ones and I can you know make this prettier. I can label it. I can you know put extra um, gra extra uh, titles on there. But I just really want to just see what what does this graph look like. And I can see that you know it does have a correlation. Yeah, it, it does, and it looks like it's going up. So that's important. All right. I'm going to use this as a guide to check my answer later. But right now I don't need it, so I'm just going to move it down here out of the way. <laughs> below everything else. Now I'm going to calculate R because that's the next question it's going to ask. And here's the formula that I'm dealing with. R is equal to the sum of X minus X bar over S of X times Y minus Y bar over S of Y. These are really calculating the Z scores of my X values and my Y values because remember we take our value, divide it, subtract off the mean, divide by the standard deviation. Well that's what this is. This is really z of x and this is really z of y of those points. I'm going to multiply them together, add those values up, and then here it's saying multiply by 1 over n minus 1, which is really the same as dividing by n minus 1. So I have to first calculate my z of x's and my z of y's, which I've put here. I have my formula here. I have, I'm going to calculate my z of x, which is x minus the mean of x divided by the standard deviation of x and my z of y which is y minus the mean of y divided by the standard deviation of y. Well, so I need to calculate the mean and standard deviations. To do that, I have my little box here that says mean. I'm going to come up here and remember mean is, the formula for mean is equals average parentheses and I'm going to just highlight my cells and close parentheses. Standard deviation, remember, is equals STDEV. You know, and now they have a dot S for 2010. And I highlight my cells, close parentheses. Enter. N minus 1, I just want to have a count. Equals count. Parentheses. Highlight that. 
close parentheses. Now I want n minus 1, so minus 1. Okay. Now to get these into the next cell, I can just copy them over, which is I just highlight. I take that little black box and I drag it over. I only need 1n minus 1 because they should be the same. So it's calculated the means and standard deviations of both of these columns. So now what I want to do is I want to subtract off these things. I need x minus the mean of x. So in I'm going to have equals parentheses x minus the mean of x. Now I want it always to subtract to that so I'm going to press F4 and that puts dollar signs in here. Parentheses divided by the standard deviation of x. And I always want to use that value so we're going to press S4 and that's going to put dollar signs in. And if I hit enter that gives me a value. All right. I'm going to do the same thing for y. So equals y Oops, sorry. Parentheses, because I need to make sure it does this first. Parentheses, y minus the mean of y. And again, I'm going to do dollar signs. Close parentheses. Divided by the standard deviation, f4, to put the dollar signs in. And hit enter. Now, if I take those two and fill down, it's going to give me all my values. Notice here if I do control this, it has each one of these cells, it's always subtracting off the same average, and it's always dividing by the same standard deviation on every one of those. Okay. The last thing I need to do for this formula is I got my z of x's and I got my z of y's. Now I need to multiply those together. So equals z of x. Now multiply is the asterisk which is over 8 times z of y. And again hit enter. I have my value and I fill down. So this is multiplied every one of these z of x's times the z of y's. Well my formula says sum. I have to add them all up. So to do that, I can just use this little sum key over here, and I click on it, or I just type in equals sum parentheses, highlight all my cells, close parentheses, enter. So I now have a sum of those. Well, now remember, r is equal to the sum of those divided by n minus 1 equals that divided by n minus 1. And I come up with 0.587 or if I take all of these, highlight all of these and let's make our lives easy and go to three decimal places you know um, I might even make these two decimal places because two decimal places. So Point five, my R is 0.59 or you know 0.6, so that's a immediately positive, medium, moderately positive, medium positive uh, correlation. Yeah, I can see there's a moderately because this is one here that drops down, so that doesn't seem to make sense because it pulls it down. If this hadn't been here, it would have been a much higher value. But I can see that it's a positive correlation. It looks like it goes up except for this one. So yeah, that does seem to make sense. Now, my correlation of 0 0.59, 0 0.6, depending on how many decimal places they ask for, would, you know, does seem to make sense, so I feel pretty good about that. And now here if I go to my do my homework, I can see this is my graph. Oops. I had the wrong one. Notice it says death right here. I need this is my graph because it was the I just did it previously, so I thought it was the same one. C is my graph because my speed limit is on the bottom. My death rate is up here. And when I continue, it asks me to go to two decimal places, and I found it to be 0 0.59. Yay! And 
This is weak, what, negative, positive, weak, negative. It's a weak, moderately positive correlation. Correct. And that's how you do this. So now that I've shown you the long method of calculating correlation where we use z-scores and multiply them together and divide by uh, n minus 1, um, I'm going to now show you the quick way. There is a formula in Excel which is equals C-O-R-R-E-L and then you use a parenthesis and then highlight one of the first column of values and then the second column of values parentheses and hit enter and notice we get the same correlation now it doesn't matter which value we put first because correlation is going to be the same and I will show you if I do equal C O O R R E L parentheses and I'm going to use the Y values first and then the X values and then hit enter it notice it gives me the same number because correlation is not causation. We're not saying one caused the other with correlation. We're just showing that there is a relation. We're trying to find if there is a linear relationship and how strong that linear relationship is. So it doesn't matter the order that we use. It just says that yes, okay, there is some kind of relationship between these two, and it is you know moderately positive. That's all we found, and so. Again, to show them to you, here's the formula, C-O-R-R-E-L, parentheses, and then you put the column of values. That's it.